lizards are one of Australia's evolutionary success stories. They've roamed this island for millions of years, and today, 623 different species live here. If you want to survive in the land of the lizards, you've got to be able to run. If you don't, you risk being someone else's lunch, especially if you're a little lizard. So in the lizard world, is it survival of the fastest? All right, come on, little girl. You're going to be good? That's exactly the question zoologist Chris Clement's been asking. <laughs> good luck, Matt. Chris is studying lizard locomotion for his PhD. So what's this little guy? This guy is the frill neck lizard. I started off doing an honours project, looking at how lizards move, but before that, I was always chasing lizards around the backyard. I mean, you see them everywhere. And we've got more lizards in Australia than any other place in the world. Whoa! <laughs> Come to Kazi lizards. Chris is working on a theory that when it comes to running and running away, each lizard has its own unique way of doing it. And that affects whether you survive or not. And uh, if it was to run, see, it moves the leg around right. right up over the hip. So he's actually really flexible. But how do you work out how a lizard is running? You turn to the pros. The people at the Biomechanics Lab at the University of Western Australia are experts at determining how different creatures move. Recently, they used their motion sensing technology to find out exactly what this Sri Lankan spin bowler's limbs were doing mid-bowl. Mutia Muralitharan was being investigated for chucking the ball. But it turned out that he was born with a bowling arm that he can't straighten. So his unique anatomical structure dictated his unusual and successful bowling style. Could it be the same with lizards? Chris thought it was time to give them a run. What we're doing here is we're attaching a marker set. These are retro-reflective balls and they'll be picked up by the infrared cameras we have around this room. What they'll do is they'll give the position of that marker in three-dimensional space to a computer program. And from that, we're able to calculate a model of how the lizard's moving. But unfortunately for Chris, lizards don't behave nearly as well as cricketers. That way, come on. <laughs> With this data, Chris is able to build computer models of the lizard's hind limbs. But to get the full body picture, we need to put the lizards on a treadmill, where we can look at them through a high-speed camera. This big fella is one of the fastest lizards in Australia. He's called the race horse Goanna because he can run up to 25 oh, kilometres an hour. This guy is the top predator, right? So if it wants to catch anything, it's got to run it down. Just like Muralitharan, the Goanna uses his limbs to his advantage. And if you look at the way its hind limb is moving, it's flicking the leg out, flicking the toe out, I should say, when it's running real quick. It'll stretch this forelimb right the way forward and uh, that'll help to increase its stride length, you know, making it quicker. The goanna's speed helped him catch his food. And Chris wondered, how do the little lizards stand a chance? Here you little guy. To find out, he put more lizards on the treadmill. And he discovered that there are many ways to make up for your lack in stature. At 22 k's an hour, this lash-tail lizard can run almost as fast as a goanna, even though he's a fraction of the size. And he does it by mimicking a human and getting up on two legs. Okay, fellas. 
running bipedally allows it to change direction too, especially the way it flicks its limbs right over its hip to avoid obstacles. And he actually gets up right up like he's almost standing up. Almost, yeah. But what if you can only run at half the speed of the goanna, like this ornate crevice dragon? This guy is living on the exposed granite outcrops we have around here in the southwest. So you've got this bald rock with no vegetation on it. So you've got nowhere to hide and you can't run very fast. What do you do when you run into a speedy predator like the goanna? Oh, you never stray very far from your rock crevice hiding place and you get there by extreme acceleration. This dragon can run quickly, but for just a few short seconds. And he does it by moving his back legs all the way around, like he's riding a bicycle. But there is another approach. The thorny devil has found a way of surviving by barely moving at all. He'll walk along and he'll creep backwards and forwards. That, we think, is to imitate wind-blown vegetation, uh -huh. as you might see it in the bush. You might go out into the bush and walk past tons of these lizards before you actually catch one. That's cool. If you can get a straight ahead those, of that. Those are um, trajectories. trajectories, so it's telling you the paths where the, the points have been. That's so Chris sure. is finding that in the lizard world, speed isn't always everything. Or it could be. Just like in cricket, success can rest on the way you use your limbs. And that would also have been the case for lizards that are long extinct. Chris's next project will be to look at fossil bones and compare them to modern lizards. That way, he's hoping to learn just how ancient lizards ran and how they escaped attack. So, as well as learning how modern lizards survive, we may soon know why some of their ancient cousins did not.